Today, we are going to talk about the state design pattern, a pattern that's perfect for managing complex behaviors in your code. But first, let me set the stage with a relatable analogy. So, imagine a vending machine. When it's idle, it waits for you to insert a coin. Once you do it, it allows you to select a snack. If the snack is out of stock, it refunds your money. The machine has multiple states, idle, as many, dispensing snack, or out of stock. Depending on its current state, the machine behaves differently. Now imagine how messy it would be if all these rules were crammed into one single function with, you know, lots of if-else or switch statements. And that's where the state design pattern comes in. It allows us to encapsulate each state into its own class, making the code cleaner, more modular, and easier to maintain. So let's see what happens if we try to manage the vending machine's behavior without the state pattern. Let's see it in action. So this is our vending machine class. In real life, the code for the vending machine is uh, very complex, but we have created a very simple vending machine where we have the snack count and the state of the machine, like idle, if it has money, is dispensing snack, or if it's out of stock. And similarly, we have different user action, like if inserting a coin or selecting a snack, like that. So we have the init method for our vending machine class, which has the state where we initialize it to idle because that is the most natural state of any vending machine then we have the snack count uh, which we initialize to five and we also have the handle method which takes the action as an input so if you think about it action is the user action if user is inserting a coin or like selecting the snack based on the machine state we check what is the user action and accordingly we either change the state of the machine or we perform some action right so here in this case if the state of the machine is idle and the action is insert coin we change the state to has money right and here we simply print like coin inserted and you can select a snap right else if the state of the machine is idle and there is some other action from the user so we prompt the user to insert a coin first similarly if the state of the machine is has money and the user action is select a snack, like selecting snack. Then we have like condition, if the machine has snack, then lower the number of snack by one and change the machine state to idle and just print out dispensing your snack, right? If the machine don't have snack, we simply say out of stock and we refund the amount to the user. So the other case would be if the state of the machine is out of stock, so we just prompt the user, sorry, there is no snack left. So you understand, right? This works, but as the number of states and action grows, the handle method becomes a complete nightmare. It's hard to read, test, or extend without introducing bugs. So let's refactor these with the state design values. But before that, let's try to run our code to see if it actually works. So we first initialize the vending machine class and we call the insert coins. After inserting the coin, it should say select a snack. And then if we provide an action to select a snack, it should say dispensing your snack. So let's see if it works. It says coin inserted. You can select a snack. Awesome. Then we have select a snack. So dispensing your snacks. Thank you. Awesome. And similarly, like the same thing again. So it works, but it's not very readable and easy to understand and definitely not scalable. So let's try to introduce our state design pattern. Let me clear the console. So the state pattern will separate the behavior of each state into its own class, right? And this makes our code more modular and easy to exchange. So let's implement it. To do that, let's remove the calling code and let's first define our vending machine class so i'll simply remove handle method for now we'll come back to the handle method later now ideally our vending machine should have the snack count right and it should also have the state that we have initialized to idle let's also have the other states in place because now we have different classes for each state. So let's define them into the vending machine class. Uh, you'll understand why we are doing it once we also implement the code. But bear with me. So we can have the idle state. We'll simply call the idle state that we will implement in a while. Similarly, we will have the has money state, which we also implement in a while and we can also have out of stock state 
So let's call it as of now. If we have more state, we can simply add to the vending machine class. And now instead of having like a raw string, we can actually give it the date name. So like self dot idle state, right? And let's keep it at the last. So it's readable when someone try to read our code. We will implement the handle method in a while. But let's first define our state classes, right? To do that, let's first define the state interface. So this is a standard way to, you know, define interface in Python. And let's have like the abstract method. This can also be imported from the ABC. Let me define the handle method, which takes action as an input. And this will be implemented by the child classes. Okay, let me put it state interface now let's define our state classes so the first one would be the idle state so let's define idle state which implements the state so let's define our handle method which takes machine as an input and the action so this machine can simply be the vending machine and the action can simply be the string awesome and we'll implement it in a while but let's similarly first define our other states that means of the and paste and this can be the has money state and this can be simply other stock state and let's define the handle method for each of them so the handle method for the ideal state would look something like this so if action equals to equals to insert coin then what we We'll simply do is we can change the machine state to has money state and we can simply print coin inserted you can select a snack and if the action is something else we can simply prompt the user to insert a coin first insert a coin first and that's it that's the idle state class for you now similarly let's also implement the has money state similarly the other stock state so let's implement the handle call for the has money state. So this can simply be if action equals to equals select snack, then check for snack availability and dispense the snack, right? If there is some other action, we can simply want the user to first select a snack, right? So here we first check if machine dot snag is positive that means the machine has snag then reduce the snag quantity by one and change the machine state to idle because we have collected the money and dispense the snag and just print dispensing your snack what if the machine do not have any snack so we simply call the machine state to machine out of stock state Right? And simply prompt the user that we are out of stock and your refund initiated. Okay. So that's our has money state class. So similarly, we can also implement the out of stock state. So this can be very simple. Uh, we simply prompt the user that sorry, no snack left. And that's it. Now uh, let's implement the vending machine's uh, handle call. So here the handle call would simply be self dot state dot handle, right? And we pass in the vending machine that is the self and the action, and that's it. So see the difference. Now each state has its own class, and the vending machine class simply delegates action to the current state adding a new state or modifying existing behavior is very straightforward now so let's try to run this code define our vending machine here and now we can simply call machine dot handle insert point and then we can call select snack so now let's try to run this code it says insert a coin first that means the initial state of the vending machine is already set to idle state idle state oh there is a typo it should be insert let's clear the console and now let's try to run the code so it says coin inserted you can select a snack then it says after we give it an action of selecting a snack it says dispensing your snack thank you now let's try to select the snack again when machine actually turns back to the idle state 
and it should prompt us to first insert a coin, right? So let's run our code again. And it says coin inserted, you can select a snack. Then it says dispensing your snack, thank you. But when we try to again select a snack without inserting a coin, it prompts us to first insert a coin. So that means our code works. And you saw, right, when this code was not working in the first run, we knew that the initial state was set to idle state. So we only went here to debug our code. So it was very easy to kind of look up the code and find the error. So now it's very clear that with the state design pattern, our code is very easy to maintain and adding a new state or modifying the existing behavior is straightforward. So let's quickly look at the benefits of using the state design pattern. The first one is the cleaner code. So with the state design pattern, each state's behavior is now encapsulated, avoiding huge ifs or switch statements, as we saw in our example. Second is the extensibility. Adding or modifying states is simple and doesn't affect our existing code. Third is the separation of concern. Each state now focuses only on its own behavior. And here are a few examples where the state design pattern shines. The first one is media player. We know that when we try to play music or uh, play a video on any media player, it has different states like play, pause, stop, etc. Second is the ATM machine. Very similar to our vending machine, ATM machine also has states like idle, card inserted, dispensing cash, etc. Third one is the e-commerce checkout. It's a little gray area, but it also has states like adding to cart, payment pending, order placed. So different states, right? So that's the state design pattern for you. It's like giving your code multiple personalities, each with its own set of rules. It makes your code clean, modular and easy to maintain. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.